All right. Come on, YouTube. Catch up. Hello, everyone. So, it's been a it's been a weekend. It's been a week. It's barely just started. So, uh, yeah, this is gonna be slightly different because uh, my friend Jason, owner of Redfish Bluefish, who I'm pretty confident is in the chat. I saw him uh, post pre-stream. Contacted me, said, "Hey." want to give away some Corydoras. Of course I said yes. So we, we chatted a little bit and uh, I kind of mentioned it last stream just toward the very end that like we'd probably be giving away in like a video or something. Decided to do it in this stream. Uh, there's a there's a hitch to that too in that one of course you have to be in the United States. I don't think he wants to be shipping like overseas or anything crazy but um we're going to give away something else next week, too. And it's not Corey's. It's my fish. So just keep that in mind. But it might not be what you think it is. So let's talk about, for just a minute, these guys. Corydorus leopardus, or the leopard Cory. So this is the C-102. Uh, these guys happen to be wild-caught uh, as opposed to captive bred. And, like, it's really common. And keep in mind, I'm not a super, super knowledgeable Cory person. Like, I'm not your, uh, <laughs> your like, Eric Bodrock or something. But uh, these guys get really commonly confused with, like, the Trilineatus, the Julii... Uh, and then the, the Leopardus, the three of them all look similar. There's differences that you can look for, but they get confused with each other. These are the Leopardus, the C-102. Uh, they're actually really hard to find true Leopardus. So getting three of them for free, it's pretty sweet. I'm just going to put that out there. This is a trio. Uh, can't... I'm not going to put it on Jason to guarantee that you get uh, any ratio of males and females, just that you will get three beautiful, beautiful quarries. I've seen them in person. They are gorgeous, gorgeous little buggers. Uh, so we'll have that at some point. I will give you a keyword. Now, for those of you who are in chat early, which I appreciate, I'm going to let you in on a secret for this particular giveaway. I've had, now, normally, like, Nightbot uh, doesn't let people who spam get multiple entries, right? You just get one. It just looks for people that put it in. But, little secret. I'm going to put on Nightbot's anti-spam filter. So, when the keyword comes up, put it in once. This many. I gotta put the quarries out of the way. They're blocking my finger. This many. One. Because if you spam it, you get disqualified. So that's gonna be the secret to prevent people from just like slamming chat with the hashtag, whatever that might be, at one point. So keep that in mind. Enter it just once, once I give you the keyword. Don't spam it. It won't help you. Uh, and uh, I had a couple people complain about it, even though, like, the system is designed, so you only get one entry no matter what. It just, like, highlights your name. I can literally watch it over on my other screen over here. But, uh, yeah, I'm just going to, like, on the sly, put that in there. I'll mention it several times, but just put it in once. When we get to that point, uh, I'm going to reward you folks who stay here longer by announcing the keyword at a random time. Those of you who are super smart can probably guess what it will be, but yeah. <laughs> so, with that being said, uh, this is a super cool fish. I'll put it back just on, on screen for a little bit. This is what we're giving away. Three of these beautiful guys, all sponsored by Redfish Bluefish. Uh, so, he's paying for the shipping. He's giving you free fish. The whole shebang, what will happen is the winner will contact me, and then I'll put them in touch with Jason, and we'll get everything worked out. Uh, yeah, 
So I'm, I'm actually headed out to Redfish Bluefish this weekend. Pretty confident, unless something goes crazy for both of us. And uh, be dropping off a certain set of fish. I actually want to go over something really cool. Um, so because I'm not doing any any crazy topics this week, which, by the way, if you guys have questions, feel free at Bentley Pasco. That makes it really easy for me to see them. You can start putting questions in chat. Uh, keep in mind, I can't give you like a million answers about these particular fish, but I do want to talk about one thing. I got recent feedback, and I need to respond to this person because I'm very thankful. Uh, Corey, you know who you are. So thanks for your spotlight on Jason. He was awesome to deal with. Fish came in very well packaged and looking great. My first time mailing fish. Pictures do not do these guys justice. The color shift is amazing. By the way, that's uh, my uh, my guppies, right? Oh, and they seem to love sleeping in the dwarf sag. Hopefully my two pair will turn into an awesome colony. And uh, sent to video along with, now I'm... I, I got in super late, so I didn't have time to, like, render the video so you guys could see on stream. But maybe we'll try and do that next week. Um, kind of cool. Like, for those of you who ordered through Jason, a few of you commented, which I appreciate. Just, like, I kind of, like, on the slide, I was like, give me your feedback. I just want to know how things come in. Uh, and, and I have a certain amount of faith. He knows what he's doing. But I like to know, right? I, I love knowing that uh, a person who I consider a friend but have also chose to partner with a little bit here... Uh, is doing a good job, right? Because we want to get fish out to people. And more importantly, we, we were uh, negotiating, if you will, <laughs> a price on a fish last night, uh, just back and forth in text. I was doing water changes in one of my fish rooms, uh, you know, just <laughs> trying to do stuff. And I have a, a few excess fish, and those might be what we're giving away. It's not, it's not guppies. Keep this in mind. Um those we were, we're sitting going back and forth and we're talking and like this should tell you how I, I approach things they're just obviously I don't care that much about money I quote an initial price based on what I see them retail at in my local fish stores and he kind of let me know I was like hey man you know this place has it way cheaper I don't know how hard it's going to be to compete and I just said okay what do we need to do to my price point because I don't care to make you competitive right because my, my goal any fish that come from me that go to Redfish Bluefish will go to him at a price that makes it so that the people purchasing them can get them at not some absorbent cost. We want to make sure that they are affordable. Now, granted, it's not like I'm a professional breeder. You guys know I work a ton. So it's not like I'm going to take 3,000 fish in there. But for what fish I do take in and when I can get them in there, the goal is to keep them at a very, very reasonable price, no matter the fish. So at one point, uh, I'm probably going to be taking something like Waba Mooster Plecos to Jason. And my goal is to make them very, very reasonably priced. Instead of, you know, most places are going to charge like a one inch fish is going to be something like $65, right? Uh, not, no, not mine. This is my personal goal, right? Because my my goal with a lot of the fish that I keep is I want more and more of them to be in the hobby, no matter what they are. Uh, you know, I especially care about that with the guppies because I don't want that strain to die. But any fish that I keep, I want them to get into the hobby. I want more people to have access to them because I don't think that we should look at a fish and be like, oh man, it's that fish. It's so expensive. No matter the fish, they all breed. And once you kind of figured out the, the crack the code, so to speak, you can reliably get numbers of fish, right? And if you're you're doing things right, or you're like me and you specialize where you only care about breeding certain fish at a time, then it's probably not about maximizing your profit. It's more about maximizing the health of fish, getting nice, healthy fish, which, uh, let me tell you, the, the fish that we're giving away next week, very healthy. <laughs> very healthy they eat like crazy <laughs> but uh and so do these quarries by the way I, I he fed some when i was there and they just went hot well and stuff it's pretty fun um and for the question in chat from steven how are my plecos doing they're doing phenomenal i have a new batch of babies that uh, i had to run in a tumbler for a little while i was testing the zis egg tumbler 
which I'll, I'll probably talk about that in a video at some point in the next like month ish. <laughs> um, just, I've got, you know, a, a series of stuff. I don't know how I'm going to release things and film things, but, um, you know, I've, I've got a new batch of babies. I've seen them all over the place. Uh, they're in the adult tank. I'm kind of trying to test raising a certain number of babies in with the parents at first and not splitting them all the whole time. Uh, mostly because I have limited tank space. And two, that tank doesn't have a lot of fish in it right now. So it can afford the room and I can, you know, very easily overfeed that tank. And it's way over filtered. So it, it handles it very, very well. And I, it gets very regular water changes. So it's not adding an extra tank that I need to like water change every three days, right? It, it keeps the same number of tanks that are getting a strong water change every three days, makes it a little easier on me, blah, 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 right? Nice and simple. But uh, there's a new batch, I think is about 20-ish fish. Um, like <laughs> these were eggs that got kicked out of the, 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 the cave. One likes to kick his eggs out as far as my two males. The other one holds them pretty well. Uh, some of the eggs like went off into the nether. I don't know where they are. And then the ones that I got, cause it, I, I just kind of came home and saw this cluster of eggs. I was like, Oh, that's not good. Go grab my, <laughs> my egg tumbler, get them set up. Um, but it, it looked, it's smaller than I've seen other clusters. So, you know, it's probably not as many fish, but the, the Waba moosters don't produce as many eggs as like, uh, your standard, like albino bristle nose or something like that. Right. So they're doing good. They're, they're gorgeous like the males when they like pop out and show off man it's unreal how bright yellow they get and that that pattern just like really shows up and they'll hold their bristles like straight up like a mohawk it's so funny to look at because their their bristles sit more in a line than like kind of that big array like your standard bristle nose do uh, and i mean they have some that come around the side and stuff but like they have these super long ones that all stand up in a line it's it's really funny to look at <laughs> It's, it's so funny when they're, like, at full display trying to attract the lady plecos to the cave. <laughs> you just see this, like, mohawk <laughs> coming off the front of the nose. <laughs> hey, man, it's, uh, it's pretty wild. But, yeah, doing good, doing good. Uh, EJ Fishes said thank you again for the assistance with the Flugel 3.0. You're most welcome. Also, order from Jason was very satisfied with everything. See, there you go. Good stuff. So I, I kind of I kind of expect you know Jason to do well. He's he's been doing fish long enough. He kind of knows his jam. Uh, a dragon layer got the black quarries. Nice. It's been growing like weeds. Twice as big in six weeks. Holy moly! They must be eating a ton. Giving away a ton. <laughs> okay. So with that being said, uh, we'll go into full questions. Don't worry. Stick around. The keyword will come out. Just remember the secret. We'll do it one more time. When I post the keyword, only put it in chat once. Otherwise, Nightbot's spam filter will disqualify you. Thought I'd try that once because I, I know there's some people that just like spam the Jiminy out of chat. And it can be a little annoying. But you guys are usually really good. So I'm not like uh, some of the larger channels where you'll see just ridiculous spam <laughs> uh ren i've bought dwarf sag from multiple stores and it all grows super tall lighting is generic amazon plant led and a clip on phoenix planted plus on the same tank any ideas why uh so unless you are doing really like most of the most of the the sag in vals they will grow long unless you have in the case of Dwarf Sag, really high light. Like, he's seriously pouring a ton of light at them. Uh, and it's it's one of those things where they they naturally are things that reach for light, reach for light, reach for light. Um, so you're kind of like, to keep them short, you're kind of fighting nature. Over time, they will just grow long. Uh, but it is technically possible with a ton of light but then you risk algae outbreaks and so it's like this super careful balance of lots of light and also not producing algae um but in general it's basically just that you have enough light to make them happy and make them grow really well but not enough to where they can like force themselves to stay short just one of the things that those like grass blade type taller plants will inevitably do
<laughs> Quirky lemon. So I ordered a banana plant and dwarf aquarium lily, but I don't have light or fertilizer. Which one should I get first? Uh, so, Quirky Lemon, let me ask you this. If your tank is by a window and gets a reasonable amount of sunlight, you might not need light. On the other hand, if your tank has a reasonable number of fish in it, so there's a decent amount of waste that goes in there, you are getting some level of fertilizer already. So... It's kind of that balance. In general, the lily plants like light quite a lot. They can go without being super well fertilized for a bit if there's some fish waste for them to live off of, especially if you've got a, a decent layer of kind of mulm that's down in the substrate. They can live off of that pretty well without having a direct fertilizer source. Now, keep in mind, you can get a lot of lights relatively cheap. Doesn't mean they're great. But they can do the trick for a while. Um, some lights are better than others, of course. You don't necessarily have to have something like a Fluval 3.0. They're expensive. I totally understand that. But there are budget options. You know, JCMP is a great example where um, my experience thus far with their lights have been very positive. They're not very expensive. They're pretty cost efficient. You could say the same thing about Beam's work. Um, I've seen some people complain about, like, the cheaper Nikrus that are only white and blue. But... In general, like a lot of those cheaper Chinese-made lights that you'll find on Amazon are all doing the trick. It depends on the size of your tank, uh, whether or not there'll be enough light. For like taller tanks, it's a little harder. Uh, the newest JCMP light, which is like dirt cheap right now because they have them on the stale, sale still. It's like 30% off. Uh, it, that's a really powerful light considering how small it is. But... And, and similar, like, this clip-on that's up here, right, it's the same design as this clip-on, but it's um, just a longer version of the light, right? And instead of a clip-on, it has rails that sit on the edge of your tank. But pretty bright. I mean, you can see how bright this thing is behind me. And I'm lit by another light over here, and it still looks super bright behind me in the camera. So pretty powerful light for being a budget-friendly light. Uh, Beam's work does very similar, where they, it's pretty good for a budget-friendly light. I like them quite a lot. I use them. Although I'm slowly phasing them out. <laughs> uh, but I've had my two of my biggest tanks have been on Beamsworks for four years now. And they've done just fine. You know, they, they grow plants well. Uh, depending on what plants I choose to grow, it might be uh, harder or easier, right? If I choose easier plants, they do a phenomenal job. But in some cases, like if I choose super low demand plants and they're getting too much light, I see bunches of algae. So it, it kind of depends on... What what matters most for you? I would argue the light is probably the more important thing and the fertilizer can wait, but you can get a relatively cheap bottle of like Aquarium Co-op Easy Green or, you know, uh, Nylock G Thrive, pretty much any of those liquid fertilizers. It won't cost you too much. It'll last you a long time if you're not using it with a really big tank. And then focus on getting a reasonable light. You don't have to have a super powerful light. You can do really well with a smaller light uh, or a less powerful light or a less expensive light. It all depends on the tank in question, which I'll, I'll kind of try in a cruise chat and see if I see it uh, as to what your, your setup is. But just keep that in mind. Uh, so near a window, but kind of dim. So yeah, if it's dim, definitely get a light first. Uh, do Light is more important for at least getting a plant to convert than necessarily like fertilizer. Because you can have tons of fertilizer, but if you don't have the light, the plants aren't getting enough of the, the key component to start photosynthesis, light. You can have lot, you can have light and not enough fertilizer, and they'll live kind of lean for a while, and but they will survive off of a little bit of fish waste and stuff like that. So just keep that in mind. Like I would prioritize light and then fertilizer, but you can usually get a bottle of fertilizer pretty cheap that'll last you a long time. Okay. <laughs> Sean. <laughs> no, I don't have any shell dwellers left. It's not Shelly's. <laughs> that, the tank where my Shelly's used to dwell is full of Centaniensis right now. And four... Is it four? 
four of the Wava Moosters that were the ones I got from Marcel out in Wisconsin that are to diversify my adult genetics long term because I really want to breed a bunch of that fish because I like that fish a lot. And also, um, I have like my personal like local Pleco guru in Alyssa nearby. So if I screw something up, <laughs> I can work with her. <laughs> well, so far, like they're they're bristle nose. They're really low demand. You just feed them and clean them, and they're they're good to go. Paul, uh, the Apisto Hongslo I technically, if you want to pronounce it, I always like just calling him Hongsloy because I'm lazy. Uh, I got from Jason 10 days ago, have started spawning in the quarantine tank. Wow. Those fish are happy. <laughs> or just, you know, doing what fish do. That's great, man. 10 days in, they're already spawning. You haven't even moved them to what their final house is going to be. Nice. <laughs> That's real nice. <laughs> I'm sure that I'm sure if Jason's like paying attention to chat or listening, he's going to be happy to hear that. Because that's a that's a cool fish, man. They're when I went there at first, they weren't fully colored up, and then the second time I went there, they were colored up. And the difference was like night and day. So I remember looking at them, and be like, "Oh yeah, I've I've seen pictures of these guys. I really hope I get to see them colored up in person." And the next time I was there, like, eh, what three weeks later, a month later, they were they were all lit up. They looked fantastic. Still kind of shy. They were hiding from me, but you know that makes sense. I'm wheeling this giant camera lens in front of their faces. <laughs> The embers, a tank of two species of fish or a tank of five to six species. Which do you prefer? Okay. And we, we might go into a really long rant, but I'll try to keep it not too long. I have changed the way that I like to keep fish from when I returned to the hobby. At first, like when I, because I do rainbows, right? Rainbows are my jam. Um, I really was into like, that, that array of color, almost like how you keep African cichlids, where it's like a couple of this one and a couple of that, and like three of that, and four of that, and five of this, and two of those, and I can only find one of that guy, so I've got that one. <laughs> you know, right? It's just like some kind of like hodgepodge pseudo Noah's Ark tank, but rainbows will school together, right? So that's kind of okay with rainbows. They don't need to be all the same species. And I liked it. It was this big array of color, but the more that I have gone on, I have noticed for me that the behavior in my fish is different. I get cooler behavior and more um, of what I want to see in those fish when I have higher numbers of just one or two species of fish. Um, especially in the case of rainbows, where, like, if I have 15 fish in a tank and they're all mixed, and yeah, they kind of shoal together and they'll, they spar with each other here and there, but if I have 15 fish that are all the same species in a tank... I see this way different game where, like, you know, certain males are, they have, like, their, their territory areas, and others are just, like, chill, subdominant males. And the, the females are, like, kind of get to play this game where they get to decide, like, which area they want to go. And you'll see two or three males all kind of, like, war trying to court that one female. It's really cool. And and by war, I don't mean, like, combative. Just, like, they, they come up, like, battleships. I like to call it broadsiding. They'll come up beside each other and start shimmying, right? And some of them will do this. They'll come, like, full sideways on you. It's so funny to watch. Rainbows, rainbows just give me such a giggle. But um, I, I have changed over time to where, like, the more I have kept tanks where I only have one or two species, and, and I don't necessarily count, like, some of my, uh, you know, cleaner fish, if you will. So, like, I'll have two species I care about looking at, and then I'll have things like autosynclus in there, or I'll have uh, some Siamese algae eaters, or whatever, like, kind of is there to maintain my plants a little bit and keep some level of, of something in balance for the system. I don't count those. I, I, I'm focused on, like, the rainbows, or in the case, like, the guppy mansion, up until recently, it was only the guppies in that tank. And then auto synclus. But I don't count the auto synclus, right? I, I could have 100 autos in there. I probably wouldn't care. <laughs> I wouldn't count them. But I like seeing them. I don't think I have, like... It's like 12 or 13 of them that are in there because that produces a lot of biofilm uh, and a lot of like some my if I would not keep that many, there would probably be evidence of diatomous algae showing up on the glass where they keep it pretty clean. Uh, then there's some, you know, standard spot algae that you get that's going to happen. But other than that, tank stays pretty clean. So I think it's one of those things where I think 
we we as fish keepers and this this can be a matter of just like how many tanks you have we can get in that mentality of like i want to see lots of different stuff because i want to keep lots of different stuff and then as you get like you know crazy <laughs> like me and you have say 20 plus tanks you start going you know i kind of want to have this tank is just this fish and this tank is this fish this bigger tank, well, I'll put two species of fish in there, but they, they look completely different, or there's a very obvious difference between them, so that I can enjoy both on their own, but they're in there together. I think that's a little, like, I think that's something that might happen a little bit more as we, Aquarius, like, either get more tanks or just we've been around longer. We, we look at how we keep our fish differently, and for some of us, like me, it becomes, I want to see the closer to wild behavior out of my fish. And the way that I do that is by having higher numbers of a single species or two species that are different enough to where they could coexist in a water system. Uh, so an example of rainbows is a lot of times you have water systems where there'll be a Chalatharina and a Melanotania in the, the overall water system, not necessarily in the exact same spot. And I'm kind of like merging those water systems together in my tanks in a sense. So I hope that embers you, but embers you, I said embers you, answers your question. English is my strong suit. <laughs> but in general, that's, um, that's kind of how I like to roll nowadays. Early wasn't how I did it. I just like would jam as many, as many things as I could in a tank and just be like happy at the array of color. Uh, Hayden Shran, what do you think of fluval bug bites? And so I've, I've talked about it in one of my food videos and, um, I have a new video that'll be coming out relatively soon. Well, I've talked about their flake, but there, I have a couple of the other flakes that, um, I've, I've tried now. So just in general, like I like most of the fluval bug bites formulas. I'm not a fan of the algae crisps, but that's just because I have had, um, slightly more success with the stuff that's made by extreme however uh what was in the comments and i think this is really noteworthy in the case of the extreme sinking wafers you don't want to feed exclusively those like bristle nose plecos because it can kind of bloat them up so you want to mix them in with actual veggies to help kind of clean them out so to speak uh which is something i do like i use green beans and zucchini pretty regularly um where those go in you know it might be like four days a week they get uh, some kind of tab, and then a couple days a week they get veg, and then the next week it could be the complete opposite, where it's just veg all the time. Um, it's just something I keep around as a staple uh, if I'm lazy and I need to very quickly feed fish, as opposed to, uh, you know, taking the time to go feed appropriate vegetable matter. But yeah, in general, like, I like the, the community flake a lot, and the, the small community granule, I love that stuff. But, um, yeah, I mean, for the most part, most of what I've tried in the line has been really good. But I haven't tried everything because I don't keep everything that would eat all those different foods. Crazy Ninja. What rainbows would you add to a 75 gallon with turquoise rainbows and koi angelfish to get a really colorful tank? So you have red and you have blue. Two options. Personal choice. I would go get Melanotania Herbert Axelrodi, a.k.a. the yellow rainbow fish. So it's going to give you this brilliant yellow body with a nice red finish. The males and the females have color. The males are the ones that are going to have the bright red fins. The females don't have much color in the fin, but both will have that yellow body color. It's just more, it's even more vibrant in the males. Also, it gives you kind of a contrasting color to that blue, so they're going to, oh, they'll make each other pop, right? Or... If you want something that is not um, not as common and not as colorful, but is a, a completely different pattern, and that pattern will stand out, you could look at uh, Melanotania maculakai. So maculakai is, and there's also the is it Sahulensis now. They've changed the names on one of the what was formerly a maculakai, but. They're a silver fish with these nice black stripes, and then their fins have color, either an orangish red or, in the case of the Skull Creek ones, are kind of a yellow color. Uh, that pattern really stands out because that silver with the black lines is really, really distinct, and then those fins like outline everything with this nice pop of color. And it, 
having that like silver fish on a bunch of plants with other colorful fish, you'd be surprised at how well those little silver fish start popping out and becoming the thing that draws the attention of your eyes on top of all the color. Because sometimes too much color can actually like just start to all mesh together. If that makes sense, like your, your brain kind of just like fades out a little where if you have things that are normally we would look at as like, ah, it's a silver fish. It's kind of drab, but that pattern is what pops out, right? And that you see that pattern, your eye will recognize that pattern just like that versus the big, big, beautiful turquoise and, you know, koi angels. you got that nice splash of red that's coming through that kind of orangey red. It, it gives you a, a little different thing to kind of like mess with the eye and catch your attention so those would be the two options i'd look at personal choice the yellow rainbow fish back up if you want to play a little more interesting mcculloch also they're a smaller fish compared to those angels and stuff so it'll give you like kind of a a, a not showpiece fish if you will even though they are really really pretty uh and you could have a larger school of them if you wanted a, a more numbers because they are a smaller fish Dude, whoa, chat jumps. That shows you how far behind I am as chat has to jump on me. <laughs> By the way, guys, if I miss your question, feel free, feel free, feel free to just like re-put the question in chat. Uh, we're getting close to the time where I think it's time to start talking about some stuff that involves giveaways. But first I'll answer this one question and then we'll we'll talk that stuff. So uh, oh my goodness. So Sean F, sorry, like chat jumps. If I missed you, don't feel free to repost. Have you had a chance to grow Vesuvius sword plant? If so, how fast does it grow? Did you enjoy it? So I grew Vesuvius in a no CO2 system uh, that grew kind of slow. I saw it get nice and bushy, but I didn't get too many runners. I mean, I did get some, but it was more like a um, they kept compact into an area on like uh, other valves that I've had in other places where they just go hog wild and take over like a whole tank if they can. Um, it does grow a little bit slower than like jungle valve and dwarf sag, but in general, I've, I've said that I, or I've, I've seen that if you give it reasonable light. Uh, so like my day sim on a 40 breeder with a fluval three did a really good job uh, <laughs> growing this particular plant. It can, it can get very, very healthy. I love the way it looks. I like, I love that far different like twisty leaf texture and stuff than your more generic val and i like val too don't get me wrong but um yeah i think like if you're gonna have lots of green plants and you want to go simple then the the thing to do is to start mixing all your leaf texture so you look at things like your madagascar lace your your anubius versus your bulbitis or your water sprite these things that look completely different from each other so that each plant gets to stand out a little bit instead of just being kind of a mesh of green stuff right um, and Vesuvius is a really good option to get that very different twisty texture. So, hope that helps a little bit. Now, this will be coming into chat. Remember, once, enter this once. <laughs> Do not spam this or you'll disqualify yourself. So, to enter the giveaway, Just gonna put this in chat. Or a trio of Leopardus Corridorus. Enter hashtag redfish bluefish. All one word. Might even keep the capitals, if you will. I'll casually watch over here as Nightbot starts going crazy on me. So just keep in mind. Don't spam it. That will enter you. All right. So, fantastic fish friends. What is your opinion on using UV sterilizers in planted tanks? Uh, I've mentioned this once before, but like I haven't ever done a video on it, so it's totally understandable to ask it. I think that if you are reliant on a UV sterilizer you're missing an important lesson about planet tanks. And that is you haven't figured out how to balance your planet tank. If you balance your system correctly, you really shouldn't need a UV sterilizer. Now things happen, right? It changes in your water based on the season. If you're on like city water, uh, 
all, all this kind of stuff. Things happen. You bring new fish in, even if you quarantine. It sometimes goes from quarantine to something else, and it just doesn't like something about the water in there. It stresses, and some bacteria that's in it that never showed itself comes out. But typically, a UV sterilizer isn't going to protect you from those things. It can, but it isn't guaranteed. So for me, the thing is, I don't use UV sterilizers. I just don't. I think they're a little too more too expensive. Um, they're not reliable because often we'll buy a UV sterilizer and it needs a certain amount of flow and we're pushing too much flow into that thing, right? The, a lot of times we'll try and buy the cheap one and then not realize that like, oh, if I put that thing on this canister filter or something, whatever filter I'm, I'm doing it on, it pushes water too fast to ever get the proper level of sterilization or if you have an internal sterilizer like the what is it, the green killing machine or whatever the heck they call it the ones that sit in like an internal uh filter those don't move enough water to handle larger tanks and i keep rainbows so i have mostly larger tanks so in my case like i my opinion is is simple there is a time and a place for a uv sterilizer like fish farms use them right so obviously like if you want to play it ultra safe, they're good. You don't want to run them 24-7. You would run them something like one day a week or four hours a day or whatever it is, like based on your size of your tank and your size of your UV sterilizer to run a reasonable amount of water through it. You don't run it 24 hours a day. But keep in mind that you can basically lose... You can be so reliant on it that you lose some of that inherent paying attention or knowledge of what your system is doing that could lead to a much larger catastrophe that the sterilizer can't protect you from in the first place. The likelihood's really low, but it can happen. So in that case, I would rather focus on the balance in my system and making sure that I'm paying attention to my tanks than relying on that one piece of technology that I paid a couple hundred bucks for in this particular case. Now, there's other cases where I rely on a piece of technology, a canister filter, a hang-on-back filter, a light, something like that, to provide something I need, right? But those are a little more common for fish tanks than, say, a UV sterilizer. And let me give you another example. I have bought fish from a guy who had a UV sterilizer on a tank in his store. I quarantined fish that I got anyway. I did not see any evidence at first of camelanus worms in those fish. UV sterilizer won't protect me from those. Put them in my tank, and my tank, which had been clean, not a single fish had had an issue in that tank, got a horrible outbreak of camelanus worms, and I lost several of my really good adult rainbows. And I went back to guy, that guy's store. Which, by the way, that guy is not in business anymore. I'll put that out there. And I let him know. I didn't I didn't ask for any money back. Nothing like that. I don't think he would have gave me some if I asked for it anyway. But I just let him know, like, hey, man, you had camelanus worms in your fish. And he goes, I, that can't be. I had a UV sterilizer. So UV sterilizer can't handle an internal parasite the fish already had. He's like, well, it probably came from your fish. So interesting that you note that the only fish that I saw him coming out of at first before I could get medication was yours. And then I paid attention and I noticed one of my fish had it. Nobody else had issues. By the time my medication showed up, my whole tank had it. And I'd already lost a couple fish. Food for thought, right? Now... Is it, if you could afford to run a UV sterilizer and you can get the right size, is it a good safety precaution? Sure. If you're willing to spend that money. Sure. Me personally, I would rather get to know my system so well that I don't need one with the exception of maybe on a quarantine system where I'm going to set up that quarantine system with a UV sterilizer Make sure that those fish are, like, really, really well taken care of and they go through their long-term observation before they go into other tanks. 
that might be the one case where I would look at seriously having UV sterilizer and might do so in my like eventual fish room whenever I can build it is that my quarantine system might have UV sterilizers. But otherwise, on all my other tanks, nope. Don't need them. Don't think it's necessary for me personally. I'm sure there will be plenty of people that will say otherwise, though. <laughs> Brian K, my fellow rainbow fish buddy. I've been thinking of adding some white clouds to one of my rainbow tanks. What do you think of it? So I love white clouds a lot, but my experience has been that white clouds are not as boisterous an eater as a rainbow fish is. So they can run the risk because they're small, so they can't bully their way in like the rainbows can, and they're not as fast. They can run into issues actually getting enough food. Now, if you take time to, like, distract the rainbows by feeding them over here and then you feed the white clouds over here, should be fine. They're, the rainbows aren't going to pick on them. They're just bigger, and the, the white clouds might naturally shy away until they realize that the rainbows aren't going to hurt them. Um, but, in general, rainbow, rainbows are so fast and such, like, bottomless pit stomach hungry eaters that they can cause some of those smaller fish to get, become shy and you run the risk of some starvation. Uh, and I've seen that with some other fish that I've kept, and uh, that was back when I, I didn't know as much as I know now, and I, in hindsight, I'm like, God, I'm such a dumb, I'm such a dumb dumb, <laughs> you know, like, just these are things you learn, right? You, you learn it over time, where you just like, oh, that was stupid. <laughs> Stephen P. Bentley, know any online places to sell fish besides eBay and Aquabid? My ancestors are getting a little big, and I have over a hundred of them. Get gills. Uh, you can literally open it. Like takes like ten minutes to open a shop on Get Gills. You just have to sign up for. Uh, I think it's Stripe that Dan uses on Get Gills as the payment processor, um, and then you can like very easily put up a thing and, and set everything up. It's like it's super simple. He's got tutorials on how to do anything that you might have questions on. Like, I honestly think it's a really good marketplace. Now, the, the thing is, um, how much attention will you necessarily get? I'm not sure. There's a reasonable amount of competition, but there's a still amount of competition on eBay and Aquabid too. So you'd probably have just as much uh, success there as you would anywhere else. So that would be my suggestion. Uh, there's also, I can't remember the name of it, but there's another one um, that is like get gills that got set up that's a different group of guys and, and one of them is usually in chat so hopefully this got mentioned and i'm just behind but there's um there's two versions and, and maybe candy will know but yeah there's that uh cynical guy any experience with licorice grommy nope i've never kept them i think they're pretty but i've never kept them personally i'm not a big garami person in general um you know, I had I had a gold garami that I rescued for a while. It was a big, big guy. And like, he'd freak the rainbows out because he'd, he'd reach out and feel them all the time, right? With with those big long tendrils. But uh, other than that, yeah, I'm not I'm not huge on garami, so I just I haven't uh, kept a wide variety of them. And if I were to keep any, it'd probably be the more commons like uh, sunset harani or powder, powder blue, any of those kind of more common garamis, and not necessarily something like the samurais or licorice or any of the smaller uh, like sparkling or croaking garamis, any of that kind of stuff. Just kind of. Not in my jam. I probably actually keep Pearl Grommy now that I think about it, just because they're so pretty. But where I would take keep Pearl Grommy, I could keep a species of rainbow fish, and I'd just rather keep the rainbow fish because I'm that level of psycho. I just really love my rainbows. And Grommies are kind of shy when it comes to compared to a rainbow, so they have trouble eating in the same tanks. Mike Stambaugh. What's up, buddy? Started a new breeding project. Bought two groups of jumbo speckleback cichlids. They're kind of the rainbow fish of cichlids. Interesting. Interesting. I now have to look this up. I just want to see. Just want to see what we're looking at. What do we got here? This is a trophia species? I'd have to know the exact scientific on it because you speckle back and I get like 500 different things. <laughs> Tim Carter, I have a 125 gallon tank that I just planted. I'm going with rainbow fish. Is there certain ones that I should stock before others like cichlids? 
Nope. The best part about rainbows, man, is that they all get along together. Uh, just try to make sure you have all reasonably the same size. Like, don't go get full adult rainbows and then try to put in, like, a one-inch juvenile rainbow with it. Uh, just because the big ones will bully the other ones out of the way and they'll struggle to get some food. So as long as they're all, like, kind of similar size, and by that I mean, like, if your biggest one is three inches and then you have the rest of them are two inches they'll be fine. Just don't get, like, a five-inch full adult and put it in with a bunch of, like, one-inch really, really young fish, right? Otherwise, you should be perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. That's the best part about rainbows. You can put them in pretty much any order. They all get along nice. They all get along nice. That's why I love my rainbows. They don't really fight. Tasty fish sauce. <laughs> that That's probably an opinion. Some people really don't like fish sauce. I mean, me, I've just used to it in some of the food I eat. My frog bits all slowly died off, and now same thing is happening in my guppy grass. Any ideas how to reverse the die off? I would gamble that they're probably not getting enough nitrates. You're talking about two types of plants that hog nitrates, right? Guppy grass is a huge nitrate hog. Most of the floaters, because they get atmospheric CO2, can handle a surprisingly high amount of of nitrate so it might be just that you don't have enough fertilizer and if you're not fertilizing then definitely that is your answer uh, but otherwise i would say you're pro that's probably like the best bet the only other thing i can think of is potentially that there's too much flow and they're not able to kind of uh sit where they want to be and be happy they're getting pushed around a lot that's the other thing that like floaters and guppy grass don't like it's too much flow in your tank uh Mr. F Fish. I'm not pronouncing that just in case. Did I answer the Phoenix question? No, I missed it, so please repost it and I will I'll answer it. <laughs> As chat jumps once again. Chat jumps once again. Let's go check old Nightbot over here, make sure we got people entered. I, I see a certain somebody that hasn't entered. Just putting that out there. Some people. Some people. Anyway. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, uh, Paul Saltero, man, it's uh, Our Fish Collective is the other site, kind of like Get Gills. Um, I'm not sure the exact dot com, but uh, if somebody knows. Okay, Candy linked it. Fantastic. Thank you, Candy. You're the best. <laughs> Candy the Supermod on top of everything. Make it up for us like terrible, 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 terrible YouTubers who have no clue what's going on. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Rocco's Fish Room. How did you treat the Camelanus worms? I did medicated food. I guess my real question is how long did you medicate them? So I got Levamisol from Greg Sage of Select Aquatics. I followed his directions exactly to a T. Uh, the only difference is for me doing my personal dosing. What I did is I, I mixed an amount, which is based on his dosing, that treats 100 gallons at a time into 100 milliliters of water so that each milliliter was one gallon. So for my small tanks, I could easily just go like this. I made a solution, right? Uh, my mom is a pharmacist, so kind of kind of have a little understanding of how to do this correctly. <laughs> and I also consulted her to make sure. Uh, but basically I made a solution out of water so that I knew each milliliter equaled one gallon of treating. And then I just followed his instructions to a T, made it super easy. Just went around to every single tank, regardless of whether or not I had seen anything in them. I treated every tank at the same time just to be extra paranoid. Uh, and then I, uh, there's, you know, you have a couple days where you do stuff, you do a big gravel vac, uh, and then you follow up with a secondary treatment. Cause basically what that particular medication does is it paralyzes the worms so that they can actually get uh, let out of the fish's system, right? The fish poos them out instead of normally the, the worms can control themselves and keep themselves inside the fish's intestines and stomach. This acts as a paralytic, makes it so they actually get out. And once they're out of the system, uh, they kind of stand no chance. But you, you kind of like multi-dose them and basically they're unable to eat over a period of time. They starve to death and they die. And you dealt with them across the entire tank because you medicate the entire water system. Uh, it works really, 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 really well. Levamisol is fantastic. That being said, like, 
It's not easy to get. However, Greg Sage makes that super simple. I still have like a giant packet of Amasol as my like, oh no. Because <laughs> I bought a big packet and started, I make sure that like other members of my club, because occasionally we'd see people who'd be like, does anybody have Levamisol? Please help. I don't want to order this big thing. And they'd just be like, how much do you need? I need like one gram for my 10 gallon tank. Like, yeah, okay. Come on over. And you just give them a, like a salt packet worth of it. Just here you go. <laughs> You're good. Just do do this. You'll be fine. <laughs> Nice and easy. Super simple. Super simple. Again, if I miss your question, at Bentley Pasco, just re it in chat. I will do my best to get everybody. Uh, we do have Dr. Black coming up after me. Usually starts about 7.15 Pacific time. So it's 7.15 Eastern time. Uh, Von Lurker. Any Tetras I can put in a discus tank other than the Neon Tetra. Rubby Nose? Cardinal? I don't know how well Kochu Tetras can handle the heat, but I wouldn't do Kochu Tetras because they're a little nippy. Same with like Silverfin, they're a little nippy. Um, so I would I would avoid that when it comes to being around Discus, although the Discus can fight back, and they're a big, big fish when they get it to adult sizes. But yeah, I think you'd be fine with those, and possibly even Emperor Tetras. I'm not sure about the temperature range for them, but... Um, they're really nice schooling fish, so could go very well with them. Uh, Yanni Lee, will Fluval Stratum leach ammonia? Yes, but not as much as uh, ADA's Amazonia. So it's basically like who re the, the most ammonia is Amazonia, uh, followed by Fluval Stratum and like UNS Contra Soil are about the same. Uh, and then from there, you get like ones that don't leach any ammonia at all, which would be like the Brightwell Rio Escuro. That's why. Uh, I love that stuff because it does not leach ammonia. You don't have to do that nonsense. So if you're adding it to a tank later, you don't have to worry about that. But if you're starting a tank, that ammonia can help you do a fishless cycle. So there's a there's a pro to each. In general, I don't know that um, I will ever buy ADA soil again just because, one, it's really, really expensive, and two, it leaches a ton of ammonia, whereas the competing products... And I'm sure someone will be like, it's not as good, blah, blah, blah. I mean, the difference is so small. It's so minute and tiny. Save yourself some money. Avoid the name brand. Unless you're like Mega Aquascape or Superman, you're, you want to be Green Aqua 2.0. Okay, fine. Go for it. But, <laughs> like, I think parts of the ADA system are great. Like, I think the the uh, the power sand, the, like, under layer that goes under stuff, I think that's a great idea. I wish more companies would do a competing product so I didn't have to pay as much for it but as far as like amazonia just get fluval or get Brightwell if you don't want to have to deal with any ammonia leach at all much much simpler way less headache okay i'm trying to catch chat I'm trying to catch you guys i know i know it keeps jumping uh gorsim ever keep axolotls i realize they aren't fish but uh no uh, so I, because all my tanks are tropical, uh, it's really hard to actually, like, get into axolotls. And in general, um, I think they're neat to look at, but I don't like, I just don't like them. They're just not my jam. <laughs> they're a little, they're a little, eh. I want my boring fish to be something like a pleco, uh, as far as, like, lazy. Um, and it's just, it's one of those things where, I, like, I love schooling fish in general. And... So my dog barks her brains out. Uh, she's growling at nothing. Literally just growling at my voice. But um, I just because they, they're not like a traditional schooling fish, they're just not really my jam. That's really all it comes down to. Like, I think they're neat. I think they look goofy. And that's like, there's an adorableness to how like goofy and derpy they look. But beyond that, like, it's just not, uh, it's not something that like floats my boat so much. If I wanted something like weird, I'd probably look more toward like the Mudskipper. But I have enough, like, people I know that have mudskippers that I just go to their place and look at their mudskippers, and then, and then you'd be like, okay, that's cool. What's that next rainbow I'm going to get? <laughs> that's, that's like, like, how you can tell how single-minded I am. Like, other than, like, a couple fish, like, it's just like, there's a rainbow I don't have? <laughs> I even, I'm, I'm even cutting down on that a little bit. I'm trying not to go too crazy because I actually want to be, like, efficient about my rainbows that I keep. Uh, Quirky Lemon, any rainbow that would be fine with shrimp. Also, can we do the giveaway soon? I have to go at 9. 
<laughs> I'll do the giveaway whenever I want. Don't you test me. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Very soon, don't worry. Uh, in general, no. I would never suggest rainbows with shrimp. That's not true. You can do pseudomagills with shrimp, but not the big ones. You could also potentially do radnocentris uh, with, like, a mono shrimp. But I would not put them with neocaridinas or caridinas, uh, the small guys, right? All our ornamental shrimps, no, no, no. The rainbows are notorious for tearing shrimp apart and killing them. I've had it happen lots of times. I've lost all sorts of a mono shrimp and all sorts of stuff where I was like, those are plenty big. They'll be fine with the rainbows. And then I, like, a week later, I'm like, where are they? heck are all my mono shrimp and i'll go look at it all like all the hidey holes that i'd seen them before gone just gone <laughs> and they're 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 gone they're not hiding anywhere the rainbows ate them they were delicious delicious snacks thanks dad hope you enjoyed spending the money and to that i say no sir <laughs> no i did not <laughs> okay so before i answer the next question <laughs> okay, okay, never mind. I'm gonna I'm gonna comment. I'm gonna do this one comment, and then we'll hear. Alyssa plecos boring. I'm triggered. <laughs> I don't think my plecos are boring. I love the plecos I keep. There are certain plecos that like can be boring because they just they literally just hide all day. But most of the times I like I I love them to death. Oh, Michelle Lucia. Uh, I might go grab her, but if I let her out, then I have to have her out for a while, and she's not supposed to be out for. Her. Another few hours because of things I need to do around my house. <laughs> I have more water changes I have to do. All right, let's talk. Let's do this giveaway. Let's do it. If you didn't, if you didn't get in, oh, Priscilla just showed up. All right, so last chance. I'm just gonna put this in there. Hashtag redfish, bluefish. Make sure you only enter once. If you spam it, you are ineligible. And then we'll draw that in just a sec, like. A minute. I'm going to give you guys a minute, and I know there's a play, so we're going to get to that. I'm going to try and find one more question to answer really, really fast. Man. Okay. Jacob H., my buddy, the barber. What do you think about killifish? I love, love, love the look of annual killifish, but I do not have the dedication to breed them. Like, there's that, that killifish that was in one of the aquarium co-op videos recently that has that bright red tail. Oh, it's so gorgeous. I saw it in person. It is so, 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 so gorgeous. I just don't have the dedication to breed it. <laughs> but there's lots and lots of really, really good ones. So, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Dr. Black just said there's a rumor that Joel Corvus Oskin might show up on his stream. Ooh, lordy. Might have to watch that. All right, so we're going to do the giveaway. I think, I think, I think it's been about a minute. I can I can slam dunk this thing. So hopefully you've entered, and if I missed you, sorry, not sorry, for three, three, count them, of these beautiful fish. We'll put them on screen once more. Bam, Leopardus Corridorus, the Leopard Cory, not to be confused with the Julii or with the Trilineatus, very similar. Roll it. Uh, let's see here. Nightbot. Work. Nightbot. <laughs> okay. Nightbot just caught up. I was going to put this out there. This is ironic. This is real ironic. I'm staring at that fantastic mustachioed man. I might limit it down. Jacob H. You're our winner, buddy. Three Leopardus Corys are yours. Shoot me an email, bentley.pasco at gmail.com. I'll put you in touch with Jason, and he will get you some beautiful Corys on your way. You're actually in state, which is even better. That'll make the shipping super fast. Uh, and basically, he'll ship them pretty much right away uh, from what we were talking about. So again, huge thank you to Redfish Bluefish for doing this because he's paying for everything. Next week, we will be giving away some more fish 
through Redfish Bluefish. They are some of my fish that I am taking to him this weekend. Uh, and in that case, I will also be completely free, uh, partially sponsored by him, partially sponsored by me, and that I'm bringing the fish. I'm taking some extras for him to use as a giveaway. And also, I'm paying an amount of the shipping just to split it between the two of us. Also, thank you, Fish Room Fever, for the becoming a member right at the tail end here. Let me get a couple more questions real fast. Like, Jacob, I know you're paying attention, so just shoot me an email, buddy. We'll get you taken care of. Uh, again, be here next week, folks. We'll be giving away some, some really cool fish. They may or may not be red in color and go well with guppies. Just going to put that out there. Oop. I hit the wrong button. I turned my webcam off and not my... That corridor a picture. <laughs> ah, that's how you know I'm not a professional. Uh, Gary Duncan. Apparently, do you sell, you grow and sell Crypt Florida Sunset? I do grow it. I am not currently selling it. However, um, I'm, I'm getting to a point where I actually have enough to start selling some because uh, I wanted to get kind of a critical mass, if you will. And if I do so, I'll probably do that through uh, Jason at Redfish Bluefish. I took him some Java Fern before. I might be taking him some more this weekend. We'll see. We still have to talk about that. But um, I might start helping him by keeping some of my plants and, and selling them there. And basically, you know, I again, similar to fish, we try to keep them extremely affordable. I, I literally just adjust my prices. I don't care so much about, like, making money for myself. I care about them being affordable for you folks. Uh, because I care more about them getting to people than I do about them making money nonsense. That's just silly. Priscilla, you're so sweet. The giveaway fund a $5 super chat because Bentley is awesome. Hit the like button, people. I, I say I'm the terrible YouTuber. I don't ask for that stuff. But I will say, I appreciate when people stay awesome. It's like it's a catch tag, catch liner or something for me. Uh, okay, Raphael Swift. What are your thoughts on using outdoor floodlight for aquariums? I've been looking at a Nova Stella branded Wi-Fi dimmable LED light. I don't know that one very well. 2,000 lumen. That's pretty powerful. 60 bucks for two of them, and they get up to 6,500K. So I'm actually, uh, because of a an email request from a viewer, going to be doing a video relatively soon about talking about light spectrum. And that might inform you, but a, a short preview is basically this. The, the full spectrum lights don't matter quite as much as we think they do. They help, but they don't matter insanely. Um, getting that, there's basically two tones in our lights that really matter. Warm white, that kind of tungsteny yellowish red matters. And that like 6,500, 5,600 to 6,500K, the bright white or daylight white really matter. Those two are all it actually takes to grow plants efficiently. Now, when we add all the extra colors, it gives us a better spectrum. It makes it better for certain plants to have a better chance of success, but it's not necessary in all cases. So you could get away with something like a floodlight. My concern would be it's extremely powerful, or it might be, it might not have a wide enough spread because of how it's designed, or floodlights want to jam a ton of light in one direction, not necessarily this big, wide, div, uh, dispersed spread. But the price sounds really good. <laughs> you just might have to, like, really dim it down a lot. I think it's worth a try. If you're mostly low-demand plants, you're probably fine. You know, if you're not doing any real crazy nonsense, you're probably fine. Uh, Filigree Aquatics. Bentley, have you used Greg Sage's plant fertilizer? No, I have not. It's on my list of things to try. I just have... If so much fertilizer lying around my house as is that I need to go through, that it, it doesn't justify me buying a different fertilizer and trying it when I should go through all this stuff first, because technically fertilizer does have a shelf life, so I need to make sure I use it in a proper amount of time. I do plan on doing it, though. Uh, I actually, like, long-term have a goal of, like, Greg Sage versus <laughs> Easy Green versus probably uh, Brightwell's Florin Multi, uh, just because those are two that I have a lot of experience with and then a third that like I'm interested in in side by side experiments but that's a long term thing whenever I can do my garage and, and set up like full proper testing lab as opposed to like some of my smaller uh, one off tests uh, ALM Aquatics ever kept any baddest I have Scarlet Baddest and I'm looking to get Black Tiger Baddest I love these nano fish so I like Scarlet Baddest a lot and um, I'm just how to put this I did not have very good luck with 
uh, my Scarlet Baddis. However, um, my friend Alex at uh, A Secret History Living Inside Your Aquarium, he has kept and bred Scarlet Baddis. So he's actually very, very familiar with them and does very well with them. I just think they're super cool fish. I love them a ton. Um, but yeah, it's just a, a matter of I... I'm so I'm, at this point, I'm so like specialized when it comes to my fish that I've just realized that I'm better sticking in my wheelhouse <laughs> because every time I'm like, I want to try this one thing it doesn't go as well as I'd like it to. And then that, that just means like, you know, I'm not perfect, right? We're not perfect. I'm much better with plants than I am with fish. I'll put that out there. I can say that very, very confidently. But, uh, you know, I've got rainbows pretty much down. Guppies are pretty easy and, and uh, certain placostomous uh, you know, float my boat and also aren't too hard. Uh, and others that I love dearly uh, cost a ton of money and to replace them will really hurt, but I will do it eventually. Okay, not going to go too much longer. Just a heads up because I want to make sure everybody can go to Dr. Black's stream and not overstep my bounds into his territory because he's my buddy, so I don't want to do that. Omar, do you dose differently based on water volume versus in the food? What do you dose percent-wise in water volume versus medicated food? So I'm assuming this has to do with uh, medicine. And in, in general, I follow the medicine's recommendation. So if a, a medicine says to dose like um, one gram per 10 gallons, for example, I dose one gram per 10 gallons. Uh, like, uh, you know, the, the medicines that I tend to keep, like erythromycin and general cure, the, the I get the big containers of it, and it's basically like one scoop per 20 gallons. I follow that. Yeah, sometimes you have to eyeball it because you're not perfect, where it's like, it's a 10-gallon tank, about half the scoop, right? Uh, whereas, like, with food, it's all about getting that one particular sick fish to eat what is a normal helping of food. You don't want them to have too much. That can get them sick or make them... Uh, they can cause all sorts of problems, right? But... It, it, I have, in general, not used too much medicated food because usually it's a pellet, and rainbows just don't... They have small throats. They don't do pellets very well. Uh, there are some medicated flakes I need to eventually try, but I don't have sick fish right now, so I don't have a reason to try a medicated flake. Um, and just in general, you get you get the right like balance going, your fish don't get sick. <laughs> okay. Uh, two Super Chats. One from Jacob, our winner. Thank you, Bentley. Hope this helps with the shipping. Hey, man. Should actually do that for Redfish Bluefish because he's paying for everything because he's he's such a bro, uh, which is probably why I like, you know, I, I I make sure that he's taken care of when it comes to any of our fish deals because he's such a good guy. Uh, two, Shivami Timba's a $5 late super chat. We'll cover this real fast. Bentley, can you school me on remineralizing RO water? Got my unit hooked up and running. Well water has 3GH and 12 cage. Well, the RO afterward is going to get it down to almost nothing. The big thing is... <clears throat> Follow, follow the directions. Almost every remineralizer out there, whether it's sea chem, whether it's salty shrimp, whatever it is, will tell you if you add this much to this gallonage of water, it should hit this rough number of GH and it, if it buffers KH, KH as well. Make sure you have both. Don't get just a GH, uh, GH, I said DH like an idiot. Don't say, don't get just a general hardness buffer. If you're unless you're keeping neocaridina shrimp, right? You need some KH in order to help stabilize your pH, because otherwise you're going to get some serious pH crashes with that RO water. If there's nothing in there to stabilize, and you don't need much, like two to three degrees of KH is enough. It does not take much. More is fine if you're going for harder water, but you don't need to. Okay, that's the basics. Just follow the instructions. Almost all of them are designed to, like, if you add this much of our product to this many gallons of RO water, it will bring it to this degree of hardness. And then, it, and then you can just keep processing it. Oh, I need double that much hardness? I add twice as much of the product. Right? That's, that's all it is. And just use, a T, use like, GH and Ch KH tests. Use TDS checkers. Just work with the two. Help yourself. There, there's no, like magic if you add one teaspoon of this and three teaspoons of that it will be blah right use tools they're out there for a reason most of them are dirt cheap they don't cost you very much money use them they are there for a reason and once you've figured out like the magic formula for your water just follow it don't stop because as long as it's coming out and you keep that ro unit 
properly maintained, right? You replace the 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 pieces of the unit when you need to. It's going to do the same thing over and over and over again, like clockwork. Whew. All right. We're going to go. We're going to find one last question real fast. All right, man. Chat jumped. Leslie's Aquatics, you're the lucky winner. <laughs> Fish water changed for tonight. I've got to let the dogs out and go to bed. It's 10 p.m. here. Good night. Oh, that's not a question. Just saying good night. Well, good night. Hope, hope you do well. Rogue Aquariums, hi, buddy. <laughs> I, I actually love this message. <laughs> Scarlet Badis are a little... I love them. <laughs> They're kind of little jerks. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. So, with that being said... Um, we are, we are to the end of the night. Dr. Black is coming up next. Please, 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 if you're looking to watch some more fishy nonsense, I heard through the grapevine that uh, Mr. Joel, one of my good buddies, is going to be on his stream. So maybe consider watching over there. You're going to have an absolute like plant genius on there, too. Joel really knows his stuff. Uh, I often will go back and forth with Joel as we'll help each other fix problems. So if you need more plant help, that's a super cool dude to go to. Uh, thank you so much to the Super Chat folks and the new member, my friend, Fish from Fever. So, congratulations, Jacob Etch, for the win. And don't forget, guys, next week we will be giving away a redfish that goes well with guppies. I'm just saying, you might want to. They're roughly two inches in size. You might see a picture of them on my Instagram. Just saying. The rest of you guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks to Redfish Bluefish for the giveaway and another one next week. As always, guys, stay awesome.